Hey, hey developers, so today we are doing a quick primer on Vuex modules. Now, Vuex modules are ways that we can break our Vuex store, which is our state management system for Vue.js, into almost smaller type features that can be more easily used throughout our app. So what typically happens is when you add Vuex into your application, as your application grows, your Vuex store grows, and at some point in time, it becomes a little unmanageable because it's so huge and you have just this one huge file. But there's actually ways to break this up and break them into modules, which I'll explain how that works. And it's kind of a really cool feature that you can use as your Vue.js applications grow. Now, this is just gonna be a primer on it. There is many things to, to Vuex modules, so I'll go over some of the key points to it. To help illustrate this, tutorial today, I'm going to be using this Hello World program. I actually set this Hello World program out in my last video. If you guys are interested in the description below, you can see that uh, you can go ahead and click on that video and watch it. You don't have to watch it to take to uh, learn from this video, but certainly take a look at it if you like. Also, if you guys like these type of videos, make sure you click that like button and smash the subscribe button. I really appreciate it and leave a comment below. And one more quick plug, I do have a full view course that I am creating right now. I put a link in the description that you can go ahead and sign up for it and I'll let you know as soon as it's out. It's actually a very comprehensive full course with one in one time with me. All right, so let's begin here. So this is the app that we created uh, from uh, a previous video, but it's really simple. All it is, it's a counter. You press a button, it increments the counter. And the way we set this up is that this is the home view. This is the one and single and only route that we have in here. We have, we're using some Vuex helper functions, map getters, map mutations. So this essentially maps the set counter to increment. So every time you do this click event, increment gets triggered, which updates the counter. And then we have this counter here. And then I created this mutations file just to have some nice uh, defaults here we can use everywhere, the set counter and get counter. And then in the store itself, all we do is we have a mutation and we have a getter. Now, typically, uh, one thing I didn't mention in my last previous video, but it's worth mentioning, is that uh, the a best practice, another best practice in the Vuex world is you never directly mutate things using mutations. You always dispatch actions. Now actions are typically used for asynchronous functions, but really uh, a good practice is to use actions everywhere and then have your actions commit to your mutations. And I'll show you how that works. So we're gonna make a quick change to this. It's gonna be really quick. Instead of having, uh, we're gonna have, still have a met mutation called set counter, but I'm gonna have an action called set counter as well. It's okay, we have the same names because they're two different things. But in this case, we're actually going to need to commit. So you're gonna use the commit here. And then I'm going to commit this uh, set counter. And so that way, and we'll make sure we don't have any errors. Nope, none so far. And now in our home view, instead of doing map mutations, we're gonna do map actions. And sorry for my clicky keyboard. Okay, so we're gonna do map actions here and we'll, we'll refresh it and it's still working the same way. So we just decided anytime we're gonna make changes, we're always gonna dispatch an action instead of a mutation. And it's just kind of like a little bit of a better practice. All right, so we haven't actually looked at any modules at all yet. So let's say we wanted to refactor this into its own module. So we have this empty modules object here and it wants to be, it wants to have something inside of it. So that, that's pretty easy. The, the, what we wanna do is I'm gonna create a new store here. I'm gonna call it modules, well, a new folder inside the store. And the new first file I'm gonna create is called counter.js. And I'm gonna copy and paste this from another screen just to make this a little quicker, but then I'll uh, describe what it's doing here. So what, what we're gonna do for you guys is there's really three different ways you can go ahead and create a store module. Here's the first way, and I like to call it the individual const values. So in this file, I have export const state, my mutations, here's the actions for set counter and getter. So this looks exactly like this, except I broke it out into its own file. 
and into its own individual parts. You can even go as far if you wanted to do something crazy, like put each one of each one of your states for different modules into its own file. You may want to do that in some circumstances, but I think it would get confusing. So here's the first way we want to do it. So we just broke that up into its own individual const values, which are their own objects, which have you know all our actions, getters, and mutations in there. And then the way we want to import this in is first I'm going to comment this out. And we'll do an import star as, and we'll call it counter from, and then we can grab it from modules slash counter is this way. And then we just, inside this modules here, I'm gonna leave this counter here. I'm gonna just delete this for now. You no longer need it. And if we did everything right, it should still work. I'm refreshing it. Yep, it still works as you expect it. Cool, so now we have created the individual const values. So let me show you another way. I seen it. I think I see more people do it this way than any other way. But the second way I like to call it is the export default. It's just based on your preferences. Maybe you like this way better. I'm going to copy and paste this. And I'm going to unhighlight it. Cool. So this is you creating one object and you're doing an export default on it. And inside that object, you have your states, your mutations, your actions, and getters. So it's basically the same thing. It's just going to be a different way to import it in. And this is also something you might see. So by the way, you get an error that doesn't understand what you're doing. So you have to import it in as counter from, and then the same thing, the modules slash counter. You save it. And uh, once again, I'm working as expected. So that's the second way. Now the third way is the way I kind of like to do it. Um, once again, personal preference here. So this I like to call the const all, export const all. And this is the same way, but instead of doing the default, export default, we actually give it a named export. So in this case, we're calling it counter. And then once again, we still have the states, act, mutations, actions, and getters in here. And then it's just a little bit different way to import it instead of importing in, because this when you import default, you actually don't have to specify it. But I can just go counter here, uh, putting the curly brackets around it, and then it works the same. You could even create an alias here if you wanted to as counter123 and then put 123 here. But you know we don't really care about that. We're just going to leave it counter. So you could create aliases and all that. And I'll make sure I fix it. So those are the three different ways of, of doing like module exports. And so now we essentially have a module. But let's say we wanted to create a second module. So we're going to create a new file here. We're going to call it counter2.js. And we're going to be kind of lazy. I'm just going to copy and paste this over here. And I'm going to grab my set counters. And we're going to call this counter two and we're gonna call this counter two and we want to upgrade update counter two and return counter two so now we have our counter two and now we can import this in and it's going to be basically the same way except it's, this is called counter two this is called counter two and we're gonna call this counter two so let's say we do this now, right away, you see a little error at the bottom, duplicate getter key, get counter. That's interesting. It didn't care that we had the same key names for set counter, but it gave us an error that get counter is duplicated. Okay, well, we can fix that easily. So if we go into our mutation types, we can create a second counter. We're gonna call this get counter two, call it get counter. And by the way, I'm going pretty quick here. If you are completely lost, Make sure you stop the video right here, go back a few minutes and just kind of walk through it step by step so you don't get confused here. I'm going pretty fast, but for the people that are following with me, congratulations, leave a comment below and let me know you you followed along this to this point. So now I have a counter two, so I can rename my counter two file to use the counter two name, which I need to import in. And look, I got no errors. So now what's gonna happen? So if I look at this home view, I'm incrementing set counter here. 
um, this action set counter. But both the counter two and counter one both have the set counter as the name of the action. Don't worry, it's named the mutation two. I named them the same. It, it doesn't matter. But look, the it has the set counter. So you know, stop, pause the video now, and try to think what's going to happen if I click this press me. Okay. Welcome back. I hope you thought a few seconds of what's going to happen when you click this press me, but let's let's try it out. Look, it's doubling it. Isn't that interesting? So what it's doing, it's essentially running it twice. So if I go to this view counter here, and I look at the view x, which I believe I have running, view x, and I'll refresh it. I can see what happens when I hit press here. So I see set counters being run twice. And both object, and let's see, can you see my big feds in the way? Let's see here. So you can see here, when I press the button, it's both the counter for the counter object and counter two are both incrementing by two. So it's kind of a weird thing. It's like they're both incrementing by two. And that's because we're basically dispatching both of those at the same time and one's dispatching the other. So it's kind of a weird occurrence and something we don't typically want to do. There might be times you want one dispatch. You might want to have one action name the same in all your modules. Maybe you have something called like initialize and you want it to initialize everywhere. So you just dispatch it with that same name and every module has it ran. Uh, that might be a circumstance you want this to happen, but typically this is usually thought of as a bug because uh, that doesn't make sense. But we can easily fix this because there is something called namespaces. So uh, let's see if we can fix this. And by the way, I'm going to update this to this home. I want to have this counter two showing up too. I'm going to do counter two here. And then in my map getters, I'm going to put counter two equals get counter two, which I'm going to have to add in here. Get counter two. So now you can see here, they're both being incremented at the same time. We don't have to look at the Vuex uh, Chrome extension to see what it's happening. So let's try to add some namespaces to make this more to make more sense. So I'm gonna put namespace, make sure put a D at the end. I've done that before and put namespace and it never works. And put true here. And then the same thing here, put namespace true. And now we're gonna get a bunch of errors because it doesn't, like it's trying to get get counter and get counter two and they no longer exist because now we have things that are namespaced. And so what that means is when we import it in, this is the namespace we named. We call this counter, we call this counter two. Now I could, at this point, I, if I wanted to have this capitalized, I could do as counter. Let's do that as counter two. And then, I don't know, I could, capitalize this and I'll show you why this makes sense in a second. Um, now we can go into our home view and we have this set counter and get counter, but really uh, we need to change this. So this set counter, I'm going to create it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change this here if I can type it right. This is going to be our set counter. We're going to do some string interpolation here. And now we can pass in something called counter slash uh, set counter. So what this is saying is every time you hit increment, it's going to do the counter action. This is the counter module, this namespace module called counter, and that's going to call set counter. And then we can do the same thing here. So now we don't have anything listed. So it says unknown counter, counter, get counter. So this should be counter two. That's what it's supposed to be. There we go. Now we refresh it, we have no errors. Now if you hit press me, it's actually incrementing the counter as it's supposed to, and it's not doubling the counter. But if we wanted to do counter two, we could add in, uh, I don't know, we could add in another one in here called increment two and press me counter two. And inside here, we just need to add the other action, the other action, which we call increment two. And we know this is counter two. 
And now we have a counter two button, a counter one button, and they all work the same. Now you can see how this counter here, I could actually, if I wanted to, I can put this inside its own mutations. Now I call this mutation types, but really this, maybe I should rename this to like all types, but whatever. So we can call it like cons counter module one, counter one module, counter one M. And we can do counter slash here. And then we can have counter two, and that'd be counter two. And now I can import those in here. So go back to home. I can put in uh, counter counter two M counter. Let's see, did I call it counter one M? Is that what I called it? My mutations type counter one M two. Yeah, actually, just to be. Dantic, I'll just call this counter M. Cool, and it's still working as expected, and now we have it a little bit uh, cleaner in these variables here. Uh, we can also like combine them in this mutation type if we wanted to, but this is fine. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you guys is a way, since we have two namespace modules, how to contact one main namespace module to the other namespace module. So that could be something. What happens if we want counter one to increment both counter one and two. Uh, and so the way to do that is, I'm gonna make this an object here, or basically a method. And we still wanna do the commit, but now we want to access the other module. So here's the first counter module, and we wanna access counter two module. And uh, we also, uh, we can also get the root there's something called root getter, root. Uh, there's also something called root state if we wanted to grab like the root state of the other place, but usually you don't wanna like change state manually. We could also um, grab some getters, but for this example, we're gonna do a commit. And this time we're going to uh, grab, let's go ahead and grab the name of the second module, which we know is, we just called it counter counter to M and we know that we want to do set counter uh, yep that's actually that's all we need here counter M counter to M and so to set this commit we're going to put in uh, actually for this one yep counter to underscore M and then we're gonna put in our set counter, but we're not done yet. We actually have to put in the payload, which would be null. And then we have to put in another object and we call it root. And this root has to be true. And that basically tells it that we're gonna do this commit, but we're gonna do it in the root module and we're gonna use it this namespace that we just created. So if we did this correctly, it should work, let's see. Cool, so now it's updating both of them. The second counter upgrades, updates the second, first counter updates the first. Awesome, so that's essentially it. There's a few other things like we can do, um, we can do commits and dispatches from different modules. I could dispatch something else um, from the other module. Um, I suppose we could do something like this. Instead of committing it here, we could dispatch it. And then we can do this dispatch, so that way we're not committing to another module and it should work the same way let's see cool so yeah still working the same way no errors so now we're dispatching to the second counter uh, as an action um, instead of trying to commit to it and then i think you can even uh, if you wanted to you can do root roots uh, root state if you needed that and you can also do getters uh, there's a whole lot of things, but I think this is a, a lot to sink in. So let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below. I appreciate it. Take care.